In this video, we're going to talk about Amazon Lambda, which is a serverless compute service that Amazon offers. It's similar to EC2 in that you can run different runtimes on it, but it's different in that AWS completely manages the scaling and patching of it on their end. So what is AWS Lambda? It's a computer service that lets you run code without provisioning or managing servers. Lambda executes your code only when needed and scales automatically from a few requests per day to thousands per second. You pay only for the compute time you consume. There is no charge when your code is not running. With AWS Lambda, you can run code for virtually any type of application or backend service, all with zero administration. Lambda runs your code on a high availability compute infrastructure and performs all of the administration of the compute resources, including server and operating system maintenance, capacity provisioning, and automatic scaling, code monitoring, and logging. All you have to provide on your end is code in one of the languages that AWS Lambda supports, and we'll get into those very shortly here. So why would you want to use AWS Lambda? Well, it's an ideal compute platform for many application scenarios, provided that you can write your application code in languages supported by AWS Lambda and run within the AWS Lambda standard runtime environment and resources provided by Lambda. When using Lambda, you are responsible only for your code. Lambda manages the compute fleet that offers a balance of memory, CPU, network, and other resources. This is an exchange for flexibility, which means you cannot log into compute instances or customize the operating system or language runtime. These constraints enable AWS Lambda to perform operational and administrative activities on your behalf, including provisioning capacity, monitoring fleet health, applying security patches, deploying your code, and monitoring and logging your functions. When working with Lambda, there are a few key components to be aware of, and the first is the Lambda function itself. This is comprised of your custom code and any dependent libraries. An event source is an AWS service such as Amazon SNS, or a custom service that triggers your function and executes its logic. Downstream resources are AWS services like Amazon S3 buckets or DynamoDB tables that your Lambda function calls once it's triggered. And finally, there are log streams. So while Lambda automatically monitors your function invocations and reports metrics to CloudWatch, you can annotate your function code with custom logging statements that allow you to analyze the execution flow and performance of your Lambda function to ensure it's working properly. So let's take a look at what that looks like in diagram form. Now remember, some of the main components of Lambda are the event source, the Lambda function itself, and any output or downstream resources. So in this diagram, we have a few different event sources, namely Amazon Kinesis data streams, DynamoDB data streams, S3, and just any other random AWS services, all triggering the same Lambda function. This Lambda function is then doing whatever its runtime tells it to do, and then sending the output to a single HTTP event collector. The important thing to note with this diagram is that it is possible for multiple event sources to trigger the same AWS Lambda function. Let's take a look at another diagram. So whereas the last diagram had multiple event sources triggering the same Lambda, this has one event source triggering multiple Lambda functions. So we have a user that makes requests to api.example.com, and that is getting forwarded to API Gateway. So based on whatever parameters API Gateway receives, it's triggering multiple Lambda functions that end up deploying to DynamoDB or S3 buckets, or in other words, our downstream resources. The thing to take away here, once again, is that a single event source can trigger multiple functions if you want it to. And that wraps it up for this very quick introduction to Lambda. In the next video, we're going to go into Lambda functions in more detail. So if all of that makes sense, then feel free to move on.